So again, everyone, welcome to Thursday Night Yin. And today we're gonna have a special class. We always have special classes, but today's special class is gonna start in the chair. So as we get set up in the chair, we're gonna make sure that we're sitting in the middle or near the edge. Our legs are at 90 degrees. And we're just gonna be able to move our spine forward and back. This is gonna be our warm up. And as we do this, we're gonna do this with the breath. So as we inhale, we're gonna come up. And as we exhale, we're gonna curve our back like cat pose. Push, 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 push. See if you can touch the back of the chair. Inhale, back up. Exhale, back down. Push, 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 push. Feel the back of the chair. Inhale, back up. Lift up, feel up for five, four, three, two, one. Exhale, let it go. Push, 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 five, four, three, two, one. Inhale. Holding for five, four, three, two, one. Exhaling. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhaling. And close your eyes for 10. Squeeze your eyes tighter than tight, blacker than black. See into your own seeing. Five, four, three, two. Keep your eyes closed, but relax your eyes and exhale all the way back into the chair. As we sit back, right? If you don't have a back to your chair, you're just curling, right? Holding onto your knees, curling. If you do have a back to the chair, you can use it. Of course, if you have the rock, you can even use it even more as you're seeing. So maybe there's some inspiration for some new furniture purchases as Christmas nears, right? A beautiful rocking chair by the fire goes a long way, especially for a yogi. Good. So now what we're going to do is continue to focus on our many layers. We're going to continue this breathing. You'll see as we continue to inhale, exhale deeper. But for now, we're going to take the left leg straight and the right leg on top of the left leg and then make a nice frame. So I'm just framing my legs now. And this is very much what we notice when we do on the ground, when we do our reclined pigeon. We're gonna start in the first position. And as we start, we're gonna do the same thing as we do in shoelace, when we usually are on the ground and have both legs or in square. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna inhale, lift up, come forward with the chest, exhale back. So same thing as before. And as we do this, I want you to feel every part of the movement. I'll switch to the side view in just a second. But notice as I'm talking, I'm following my natural breathing pattern. And I'm extending it a little longer, feeling heart forward, maybe even heart even all the way to the legs, but don't drop the head just yet. Exhale, push back. If you have a back of the chair, push back into it. If not, as I showed you from the side, right? You're on the edge, you're just pushing back, right? You don't need a back of a chair, just push back and then inhale back forward. And then exhale back. One more time. And exhale back. Good. Now, from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this leg get comfortable, as comfortable as it can go. So we wanna take our hands onto our toes and we just wanna to start to move our feet around through the ankle. What I want you to imagine is that if you were pulling on someone's arm to pull them over, it's the same kind of feeling with your leg. You wanna really pull your foot. You'll start to feel all this action and reaction in the heel and in the ankle. Right? So just move it around, feel, feel, feel. And as you move it around, notice what's happening on the other side. Use your elbow. I create all the different frames we talk about each and every week to keep yourself safe. Notice your spine back and forward. Good. Other direction with the foot now. Moving the foot around. Moving the foot around. Feel, feel, feel. Five, four, three, two, one. You may be wondering why, but you're going to feel why later. 
as we start to work from toes to nose. Good. So I like to just put my heel, there's a little sort of like a, like a crevice right there, a nice little valley in the ankle. And I just like to rest it right there. And everything is relaxed. My foot is relaxed. My knee is relaxed. I'm sitting on the edge of the chair. And now we're going to take the same philosophy we did with deer pose, the same philosophy we did with pigeon pose, the same philosophy we did with lizard or dragon. We're going to start and then we're going to build up. So we're going to start on the chair. We're going to end up on the floor, but the chair is nicely elevated. It's like when we sit on two or three bolsters, right? So now coming forward, start to lead with the heart. And just like we practice when we do square pose, start with the hands, then the elbows. And then eventually one arm will go in for a little bit in front, reaching towards the floor. And then maybe the other. And then the foot may start to adjust. You may want to get into a more comfortable place where you can start to reach forward because your heart is coming towards your foot. And you'll start to feel it. And once you feel it, just relax. Try and relax into it. Remember, it's not so much about touching the floor. It's about bringing your heart. You see all that little movement? So again, the first minute of the posture is about getting comfortable. Get as comfortable as you can get. And that's what we're doing right now. Just getting comfortable, moving around, trying to find that comfortable edge. How do you find the comfortable edge? Well, once you're comfortable, then we can start breathing. Right, and as we breathe, each moment brings us a little bit deeper. As we relax, we start to let go. And the first thing I like to forget about as I'm breathing and going into the posture, cycling the pranayana and the asana, right? The breathing and the posture, cycling this pattern of breath and posture, depth and understanding, is this continues. The first thing I notice to go is the body, right? I don't feel those strong sensations anymore. If I do, then I'm trapped up in the body. I'm at that comfortable edge. I want to soften. I want to surrender. So if I was in a lot of, let's say, strong sensation right now, I couldn't go any further. I'd back off a little bit. And I'd ride that wave, trying to work for one more millimeter. Now, if I was in the pose, my comfortable edge might be a lot more deeper, right? Further down. Right? I might have to adjust my ankle. Maybe it's not comfortable resting in the position I first had. I may gotta bring it in a little bit or a little out. But regardless, somewhere safe. And then moving forward, right, relaxing fully, getting right into that spot, and there it is, and I can breathe through this now. So again, a different sensation than doing it on the floor is doing it from a chair. And that's the fun part. So continuing to breathe, feeling this might be a new feeling for you but if you dread shoelace and you dread square pose and we've done them in the last couple weeks then this posture is really going to help that because all those strong sensations are going to be there right now because we're going there really quick but in a safe way and again as you'll notice with me i love the rocking chair because again all that i teach you right all those micro movements those micro movements are medicine for your body they increase circulation circulation is increased also by respiration. You put the two together, movement and breath, you have medicine. That's the yoga. That's the science of yoga, right? And there's much more of the science to be uncovered for years to come, and we hope to be part of that science. Why wait for the studies, right? You already know, right? And what you know is based on your own empiricism, like you are your own case study. And so again, that micro movement is always with me until maybe I find that spot if I wasn't teaching, to fully let go and surrender. There it is, I can feel it. Ah. Mm. Breathing all the way in and all the way out. Good, 10. Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, 
four, three, two, and one. Listen carefully. Inhale all the way, one full bromery. Just stop, cross your leg immediately, and then start to move back and forth. Right? How did I know that was the best spot? Well, not only years of yin, but remember, yoga works in opposites, right? We were opening the hip, and now what are we doing? We're internally rotating the hip. So from external rotation to internal rotation, and that's why it feels good. Good, we've been working on a movement known as eagle pose or eagle legs. As you'll notice by crossing one leg over the other, this is very much a position that we take on the ground for shoelace, right? There it is, that's shoelace, right? So we're almost in shoelace, which is great. So all we have to do now is come a little bit more forward, a little bit more forward. If you notice it's hard, right, then this is as far as you're gonna go. You're gonna mold in and work on your shoelace, right? You can open up your legs a little bit more on the base, show you from the ground, right? You can open up, right? You can even maybe even get the other foot on the ground and do your shoelace from here, from up above, right? I'll now shoot above, uh, there we go. Good, so remember, coming into it, right? The other option for everyone else is to go into the eagle leg. And then once you get the eagle leg, you're gonna do the same thing. This is great for working on eagle, uh, because again, you wouldn't be able to do this Right? Because ultimately, what is it? You're doing it on one foot, right? By having the chair, you can work out all the details. We're doing the same thing. So heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward. I'm gonna move a little bit more sideways to you so you can see. Back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. Breathing. one and then exhale full forward for those in eagle pose you can grab under your feet for those in shoelace I'm not quite sure where your feet are but you can grab your shins pull into it a little bit more right. try and imagine yourself in the eagle pose right just with the legs all this tension is here but we're sitting. Imagine if you weren't sitting. So imagine trying to take away. Remember, get comfortable. It takes a while to get comfortable. In this position, comfort is, imagine if you could do this like we do squat, right? You could just balance on one foot and be in eagle legs, right? Forget about the arms right now. Just focus on the legs. Feel your hips. And then again, micro movements to help you out, whether you're an eagle or you're in shoelace. Good, just a minute here. And the breath goes longer and more peaceful over time. It can also become shorter and sweeter because you've oxygenated your entire body. And with all that fresh, rich oxygen, you need less of it. So your breath becomes very sweet, very, you know, natural. But in the beginning, long and peaceful, because that's how we really clear and help our body liberate all the involuntary contractions. Right, and you can feel new things emerging as you hold the posture. If you never held this posture for this long, because you've never done it sitting, or we did it lying on the ground, which again is different than doing it from above, having a little bit of weight to load into the joints. Good, 10, nine, eight, try and relax, seven, six, five, four, three, 
two, and one. Beautiful. Let's do one Brahmri, but you might want to come up for this one and then drop back in. Deep breath in. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Slowly coming up. Uncross the legs. Ah. And go back to external. Right? Open it up. Ah. Oh, remember how sore it was when it was externally rotated? Now feel how sore it is internally rotated. Right? That's the fun part. Right? Using the strengths of our bodies almost in tandem with each other. Right? We have an internal strength. We have an external strength. Ah. Oh. Good, fantastic. Let's do it on the other side now. Just change the screen so you can see me a little bit better. Perfect, good. So sitting on our chairs, nice and to the edge, right? This time, last time we had the right leg on top. This, do we have the left leg? No, we had the left leg on top, maybe? Let me see, which way did I go? No, I went right leg, so left leg on top. So once the left leg's on top, same thing as before, just starting to work it, notice the knee, and notice the connection you can start to gain by starting to massage your feet now. I work on my feet all the time, right? I literally use my feet all the time. I work with them all the time. And it's something over the years, you know, at first I was really like, ugh, feet, but they're very wonderful, wonderful, wonderful parts of our practice, right? Really strong, central parts of our practice. And when we can release tension here, that get reflected through the whole body. So that's just one of those things that the more we can work with the feet, they do it with the yoga balls, you know, rolling around a yoga ball for a minute or two and then going into forward fold. It's always much deeper. You can go further once you massage the feet. So hopefully the same for us. That's why we're doing it. Just a little bit, work through that heel, work through that ankle, pull on the toes, pull on the body, feel, feel, feel. Good. And then just relax it again. Where you put the foot is up to you. Just we're not doing the close one yet. We're just doing the nice far one, the open gate more like pigeon pose, right? So feeling it here, well, I guess they're both like pigeon pose, but more like square pose, right? Cross. So now we're getting into the sitting posture again. Imagine you were sitting on the floor, right? Full guru, yeah. If you were to do both. So again, same thing, start slowly. And as you start slowly, start first, heart forward, heart back. Heart forward, heart back. Know where you wanna go, because eventually we know we're gonna come forward. When we come forward, we're crossing that midline. When we cross that midline, that's where we start to feel the difference in comfortability, right? There's a little bit of variation. So let's extend into it a little bit more, breathing. And whenever you're ready, start to move it a little bit forward, reaching more and more towards the ground. Now again, don't need to touch the ground. Right? It's more about your heart getting towards your legs. Because if you'll remember, when we're on the ground, we do it this way. We're going to revisit that a little later. But for now, let's just go forward, right? bringing that heart this way. So rather than bringing the leg up, let's bring the heart down. Let's feel all that strong sensation down deep in the hips. Help release that. And again, teaching this class because we're changing now from summer to winter, we're going to be spending a whole lot more time indoors. Very, very important to focus how yoga is not just a lifestyle, but a whole life, right? You can do your yoga throughout your day. It can be part of your day. That's the lifestyle, right? But once it's a life, it's in every moment. It's how you sit. It's how you lie down. It's how you eat. It's how you drive. You're always aware of the mind-body connection through the breath. And so same thing here. Let's start to get into a deeper way. Start to feel that surrender. We start to relax the head, reach to the floor. And again, little tiny movements, right? If you need them, right? To help massage, to help encourage. Because again, we're not forcing the yin. The yin will come when you're ready. You'll just surrender. You'll feel the surrender. You'll feel like time just disappears. It's always the first indicator when you know you're having a true 
meditation or yin or spiritual experience, time just goes whew. But of course, with the strong sensation we're evoking, time can go by very slowly, which is why you always hear me talking, which is to, you know, entrain your mind into will, you know, use your will and use your internal will because your external will is in surrender. So now once you align internal and external will, surrender, let it go, let it be, right? Listen and receive, right? Surrender, give in, don't give up, right? Let go, let be, reach, right? The reach, don't grasp, just reach. Yoga is all about reaching without grasping. Good. 10. Good, we're gonna come up slowly and go back in with the Brahmari. feeling what a relief but we know we're going to do something that's going to give us the same feeling in a different way right so remember don't get attached to the sensation of relief because immediately once the relief is there we're going to chase more contraction we want that right no pain no gain right we got to get it out that's why that's the gain the gain is the effort reward right for little effort great reward why we don't need to do it it'll be done on its own. The body knows how to let go. You just gotta let your mind flow. Being in the chair, it's a great way to practice because we're gonna get to the ground in the second part of the class and we're gonna apply what we've learned here. Good, so from here, well, we'll see. We might have to wait till next week, but we'll see. Depends how we'll get through today. Good, that leg now crosses. Let me see if I have to move. Uh, get back up a little bit. Okay, so with shoelace, right, open up your legs. Right, form that triangle, right, that we create, and then go forward, right? That's the first feeling. For everyone else, it's a flick underneath. So I have to get up and show you. Good. Good. And just a flick underneath, you see? And you know you got it when you can do it without your hand. So I always tell my guys, you know, know you got it when you can do it without your hands. And we talk about that even with pigeon, right? Moving the leg. Don't move the leg. If the leg goes there, great. If it doesn't, work toward it getting there. But don't force it there because that's where we can get injuries. So whether you're here or trying to be here or you're fully here or you're in the open shoelace, whatever feels good, right? But you're feeling everything. And now getting it into alignment, moving around, feeling the change in the hips. Again, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back. And when you're ready, slowly come forward. And again, reaching towards the floor. I'm not actually reaching. I'm just letting my body hang, kind of going into a, ooh, like a scarecrow. Just letting everything relax. And how do I know that? Because the breath. 
Most people don't feel that they can articulate their spine by breathing. They're just not breathing deep enough. I can go from inhale to exhale, forehead to knee. And then as I inhale, I come back up, right? Because that's not the natural resting place for me. But the breath can bring me in and out. That's very in, right? The sea is still surrendered even when there's a storm, right? So even though there's intensity, emotional intensity in our lives, mental intensity in our lives, all these intensities, we have control. We have the dials over our own body, right? Because we build that barrier, that sacred barrier, right? The first barrier is the practice, the whole hour. The second barrier is within each and every posture, right? Push the world out because the world can be let in at all times, right? So you push it out and then you draw back in, right? Gain control over the communication, the relationship you have with yourself because the self can be self-illuminating, can lead to self-discovery, but it can also lead to self-destruction. The self is neutral. But as you continue to breathe, you'll feel in that neutrality, in that state, there's somewhere deeper to go. That's surrender. And so in surrender, there's sweetness. In surrender, there's nothing to resist, right? It doesn't matter how deep you are, right? In surrender, there is sweetness because there is nothing to resist, right? Just letting it go, letting it flow for 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Coming up, one Brahmari to close. Deep breath in. Slowly coming up. Release the legs open. And just move side to side. Trust me, I know the strong sensations that are flowing through you right now. That's the point. The joy of this is to give you, again, another level, right? We Sometimes we go level one, level two, level three. Well, let's say in the chair, this is all level four, right? We can call this level level four, right? Because, again, we're almost sitting in chair pose, right? And that's the idea as we're doing this stuff. There are yoga postures without the chair, and that's the core class earlier. There is a whole bunch of moves you can do without the bolster. It just takes time. So training with the chair, don't see the chair as a hindrance this fall to winter season. See the chair is a wonderful, wonderful tool, just as important as your bolster. Fantastic. The legs feel pretty good, right? Everything feels pretty good on the legs. We're gonna do one last thing just to see the flexibility. Extend the left leg out again, right leg comes on top. Now, we're in a position, very comfortable. Right, just nice and sitting pose. Good. Now, once you're here, lean back and then see if you can take your leg. Again, one hand. Don't pull. Just one hand very slowly. And as you do this, start to lean over to the right side. So slowly, slowly. And you'll feel it. There'll be a point. Well, maybe it's there. Right, and that's it. Now I'm going to hold. And I get in my chair and hold. But for other people, you might be able to get the heel right up into the thigh, right? And that's important because again, this is how we work on lotus pose. Remember I told you, when you do it from the ground, there's not a lot of space to drop that knee. So regardless if you're here, oh, drop the knee. 
here, oh, drop the knee. If you can't drop the knee, don't drop the knee, right? Only drop as far as you can and you're using your body. So I'll show you from the side. From the side, I'm here, I have my leg open, right? And I'm taking it to the side, to the side. Working it slowly, slowly toward the hip. And then once it's in the hip, right? I'm starting to move towards the ground towards the ground, right? Slowly, right? And then my hand and my foot are both on the ground with my one leg up, all right? So again, whether we're here and just working on this and we're kind of in this like hunched over, dropping the knee, dropping to one side, opening that hip, safe, right? Always safe, right? No putting any weight if you can't, right? You might just be slowly working on it, little tiny movements. But again, it's like a pick and lock. So my work is to always give you guys progression. Some of you guys have been training like this for a long time. So this is going to come as a great mystery to you. Uh, sorry, a great revelation to you. Because again, if you can practice this while sitting, even on one side at a time, you'll be amazed at how quickly you'll be able to sit on the floor in the lotus position. But again, when I say quickly, I mean a year, right? Practicing like this, sitting. But start today, right? We have the time during COVID. Good, just feel, feel, feel. I know, both hands on the floor. Right, my knee doesn't have to be straight up, right? It can open up to the side if it wants a little bit. Right, just get comfortable and feel. For 10. Nine. Coming up. And then one Bromry to go back in. I love that one. So good. So again, bring the foot out nice and easy. And then just bring it into a nice cross. Bring it up. Oh, bring it down. And as we said, as promised, we're going to bring it up. So bring that knee up towards the shoulder. Bring that knee up towards the shoulder. Once you got it, start to cradle it like a baby. So for some, it's more with the hand. For others, I like the elbow more. It's a little bit more uh, better. You don't need the hands. You can do prayer hands or together hands. Any kind of hands. But now we're just going to rock the baby. Being aware of her spine, forward and back. So I'm not actually doing anything with my body. Everything is locked. All I'm doing is going forward and back. Forward and back. For 10. 9. 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. Good, just lay the leg there, don't move, just back off, release it. Grab it with one hand and kick with it. Kick with it, it'll feel good. You're going into straight leg. So again, if there was no chair, it'd be a one-legged piston, right? That's the feeling. It's too hard for the outside of the foot, right? You can always do toes. And we're just bringing the heel in towards the tailbone and back out. Because again, you could go to the top side, right? 
You could go to the bottom side, right? Just using your leg. Vishraji used to push up his to his ear, right? There's lots of places you can go with the leg, just moving it around, right? If you're using one hand, even if you're not doing very much, right? You, or you think you're not doing very much, right? You're doing everything. You're doing exactly what is needed, right? It's the same thing doing it like this. Ugh. Right? Just a little bit deeper. Pushes, you feel a little bit more tension. Ugh. Right? And then I even stop pulling it in and out, just moving it around straight. Good, forward and back in the chair. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, guys. Relax that leg, right? Feel it, whoa, feels so good. Right, now let's do the other side. Taking the other leg, again, slowly, slowly, one hand. Notice, I'm watching my knee always. I'm always holding my knee. There's nothing worse than when I was learning this myself. You know, the yoga teachers did, you know, warn us. But the feeling of wanting to do it overcame the feeling. And I'll tell you, you know, the wanting to do it set me back two years because you injure yourself. Right? It's so easy to injure yourself. If I told you the story, it was a hot tub in Alaska and I was doing full Lotus in the hot springs, but the hot springs was like 112. And my body just, when I came out of it, just kind of fell apart. I put weight on it and the knee just went, whew, right? There was nothing to go. It was pulled, hyper stretched, right? So we don't want to get there. We want to get into a comfortable way. How do you know, right? You get it to a position, oh, this feels good, or maybe it feels a little bit more, or maybe that's too much, right? That you can push your heart back and push your heart forward, heart back. Heart forward, heart back, heart forward, right? As you roll through that movement, back, forward, back, and forward. And that's the best part. Once you got that sweet spot, right, wherever you're working on, for me, I'm up into the hip because I'm doing the full lotus, right? But working one lotus at a time, one pedal at a time, right? It's not double lotus. There's lotus pose, but the idea is the two blossoms, right? They come up, right? So rather than going down, they go up. Right? And this is like tree pose. This is what we do when we do tree pose. So if you want to think of it in that way, like, oh, I'm never going to do lotus. Yeah, but you do tree pose all the time. It's the same thing, right? We're doing the same thing. All right, let's start to stretch. Some people call this Thai princess. When you stretch like this, if you had no chair and you were doing this without a chair, and again, if you find all this hard, you can just thank your lucky stars that there's a chair. Because when I first started doing these postures, no one taught it like this, I had to do it without the chair. So the chair came through by learning how to modify. And modification is really important for us. Because again, yoga is a journey, not a destination. You don't have to touch the floor. So again, you can open up that knee too, right? Create a little bit more space for yourself. Again, it's all about dropping that knee. Now you, oh, you, know, you have time, you have space, you have energy, you have place, you can come forward. Good, one minute here. Ten. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. And one, slowly coming up, one Brahmari, go back in. And whenever ready, 
slowly coming up. Again, just cross that leg and move your heart forward and back, forward and back. And I really want to express when we're rolling back for the core yogis, we're doing exactly that. We're doing core. Like that's a core movement. Forward, also core movement, right? When we're doing our lifts, right? Also core movement, right? The core is in everything we do. The core is to the body, but the mind is to the brain, right? This wonderful connection. Good. Now we take the leg, bring it up. Right? And again, just cradle it like a baby. And you can start just like that, right? Heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward. Or if you wish, with your elbow, you can grab it. Oh, we're just gonna rock the baby, bringing the baby as high up as we can. Heart forward, heart back, for 10. Eight. Seven. Six. Three, two, and one. Perfect. From here, take that foot, grab it from the outside, grab it from the toes, grab it from the leg, wherever you want. Stretch it out and bring it back. Right? Heel can go towards the tailbone. Heel can go toward the inside hip. Right? So the foot can go to the ear, right? You're just playing around, right? Just play around, kick out, bring it back in, right? See if you can change your pattern. Knee to the inside, knee to the outside. Watch the knee to the inside, to the outside. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, Five, four, three, two, and one. Perfect. Lay the legs on the ground. Relax in your chair. Lift your heart. Curl. Lift your heart. Curl. Right? Lift your heart. Curl. It doesn't matter whether you have a back or not. Remember, it's all about the lift and the curl. For 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, really move it around, four, three, two, good, and one. Beautiful. Thank you for joining me today on the chair as a special prop to help us. Let's now come to the floor where we're more comfortable or rather, should we say, more accustomed to, right? So now that we're on the floor, let's start to see how our hips feel. Place our hands behind us, soles of the feet on the floor, knees side to side. And as we start to go side to side, look the opposite way. Look the opposite way. Look the opposite way. Good, and now start to open up the knees one at a time. Looking the opposite way, looking the opposite way. two and one beautiful so we don't have enough time to explore everything on the ground but we are going to explore a little bit because we want to see just what that did right that's the most important part so we're going to look at it from a few different angles we're going to do a couple quick check-ins with three postures forward fold dragonfly and cobbler and then we're going to rest in one last posture to end so we're going to do like one minute one minute one minute and then we'll have one final posture before our Shavasana. So coming into our cobbler pose, 
Find your way as deep as you can, right? Let it go, let it flow. And remember, the more we come forward, the more we lay down that heart. Deep breathing, long and peaceful. Just remember, the yoga's inside you. The yoga's all around you. If you don't feel support, breathe into that feeling. Hold your breath with that feeling. Learn to sit within the feeling. Not just with the feeling, within the feeling, right? Learn to disturb or poke or influence, right? Learn how to make something out of nothing, how to transform change, right? Very, very important. And we do that through awareness. It's invisible. <sighs> Guiding our consciousness. And one last deep breath in. Brahmari to clear. Slowly coming up. Open up your legs all the way nice and wide and start to walk forward. Exhale, exhale, exhale. As you start to move side to side side to side and as we go side to side the legs are going to get again very wide right and that's the best part we want to be on the inside good one minute here again stretching it out you guys know where to go we usually do these postures for three to five minutes today we're just doing one 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 real quick just to check in right how does it feel how did the chair like notice your pain thresholds notice how you feel Right? What did the chair do for you? Now imagine being able to do that for yourself all day. It might not be as explicit where you're doing a full eagle pose and bending forward, but you may cross your legs in eagle pose, or you just may cross your legs a little bit more in shoelace, the knee a little higher, pull in, pull out. As you're talking, as you're feeling, as you're connecting with you know the environment around you, you have the ability to draw forward and back with the heart center and create that beautiful micro movement right? Increasing circulation through movement, increasing circulation through respiration, right? The increase of circulation is our oxidization, oxidization, uh, fresh ricks, oxygenated blood, right? The whole notion is to create an environment where the oxygen can overcome anything, right? And I don't mean physical oxygen. I'm talking about prana, right? Oxygen does a lot, Prana does even more. That's where we go into placebo mode. That's where we go into superpower mode. That's where we go into intention. Good, deep breath in to come up. One Brahmari to clear, back down. back up take the legs bring them together right into forward fold good one last minute you know what to do right you can start by moving your feet right you can start by bending your elbows but relax your head see if you can get the legs straight the back nice and curved through the lumbar spine so it's almost like a c right creating that c pushing like a stegosaurus, the spine in the opposite direction, right? So that spine goes this way, we want it to go this way, we want to curve it forward, right? Coming all the way forward and down. Good, breathing here, feeling here. <sighs> Lifting up through the mula band into the jawler band and up, 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 up into the heart center. Right? Feel those lower bandhas lifting up. And you might even feel it all the way up into the throat. Right? As you create the inner locks, as you start to lift and pull forward, forward, breaking three through the back body for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Inhale to come up. Brahmari back through to clear. Mm. 
Uh, awesome, fantastic, guys. You've earned it. Let's lie down on the ground, right? Woohoo! Great job. And now from here, we can do knees into chest, stirrup, or happy baby, whichever you prefer. Yogi's choice, whichever you prefer. But this is a really nice posture, either one of the three because it just gets our spine flat on the ground before Shavasana, we can push down. Right in jiu-jitsu, we used to do like little tiny popcorns. Actually, no, it wasn't jiu-jitsu, it was gymnastics on a trampoline. And then we used to do this, it was really hard, but it felt so good afterward to lie on the floor and just flatten out the spine from that. So you don't realize how much articulation, undulation you can get through the spine until you start to really like challenge it. And rolling out on the floor is a great challenge. <sighs> Again, all three postures are just a little bit different, right? They offer their own little joys. That's why you saw me just transferring through them, not just to demonstrate, but I like to move through them. But definitely Happy Baby feels the best. Because again, feeling it right deep down in that core, right in the solar plex, as the knees come to either side, pushing back, pulling back, and then getting my spine as flat onto the ground as I can. If you don't know what that means, holding your legs, I'm not doing anything with my arms and legs. I'm tilting my tailbone, tilting my tailbone, tilting my tailbone. And if my neck is getting uncomfortable, we haven't been on the floor very long, but you can always use a bolster underneath your head. But I like to flatten my neck so everything gets elongated, natural chiropractor, right? That's the feeling. Doctor, not a doctor, right? That's what a yogi is. One who heals oneself. You are your own practitioner. And you have your own practice. Right? And a doctor has a practice, and he's a practitioner. right? But of medicine, what are you? You're a practitioner of health and wellness. Right? You serve yourself first. Because again, what good is a doctor if a doctor is sick, right? Can't help anyone. Same thing with us. It's amazing how in some professions it's just so literal. Right? So in yoga, we always say first for yourself, then for another, then for all others. Right? But the practice really starts here. Our kindness, our love, our respect, our ability to handle things, it all starts here. Within ourselves. Good. Ten. Six. Good. If you're in happy baby, go to stirrup. If you're in stirrup, goes into knees into chest. If you're in knees into chest, just stay right there. We're going to do one brown ring all together. Deep breath in. down at your side release the legs and then exhale whenever you feel like you can let that energy down 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 through the ground and into the floor in the first few breaths you'll feel the tension maybe pooling down in the hips 
If that's so, just bring the soles of the feet to the floor. That'll help flatten your back, right? Again, that area in the lumbar spine is usually hypertense, right? There's a lot of contraction happening down there because it's constantly supporting us, sitting, walking, right, throughout our day. So to lie down, to let it go, to let it release, let alone the years of not yoga that we have, this is what we're trying to circulate, regulate, and move through the body, all this stagnation. No different than blowing your nose, right? You have congestion, you blow your nose. But how do you, how do you release that congestion in the hips, right? Or the heart, right? Or the mind or the brain, right? How do you release that psychic congestion, those sensations that occur through the nervous system, right? Slowly, slowly, over time, practice, devotion, and with joy, right? Squeeze your glutes, release your glutes, squeeze, release, right? Make sure you chase the good feelings. We all have good feelings inside of us. We need to learn how to chase those good feelings or seek those good feelings because those good feelings can turn into really good feelings, right? And that's all it takes. It's a consciousness. It's a focus, right? If you choose to focus on the bad, right, then what are you, where is your attention? If you choose to focus on the good, where is your attention, right? The attention can only be at one place at a time. When you're in yoga, you're not thinking about good nor bad. Therefore, your attention is in both places. If you don't believe me, another example, it's like happiness. When you look for happiness, when you search for happiness, not the way I was just describing it, I mean like you literally, you know, do everything in your life that makes you happy. If you were to do that, you would be miserable. <laughs> because again, what makes one happy is the pursuit. Right? What makes one happy is the satisfaction or the accomplishment. What makes one happy is sometimes not being happy or seeing another person happy. So it always comes to us, but when we you know, explicitly try and make our life happy, it never happens. But if we don't focus on happiness and we focus just on our life, then happiness comes almost as a byproduct, as a as a guest, as Rumi would say, right, very poetically. Here on the ground in Shavasta, integrating the whole practice, I just love feeling grounded. Right? I love the feeling of nothing. I don't have to think, I don't have to feel, I don't have to know. Well, I'm teaching right now, so I'm not fully in Shavasana, but if I was, right, Alex doesn't talk through his own Shavasana, no way, right? It's just the teachings make you guys as comfortable as you can be so you can relax so that you can have the same experience yogis were having 10,000 years ago and that yogis will have 10,000 years in the future if it's real yoga it feels like this peace truth love honesty integrity strength it's all here it's all within ourselves Whatever our weakness is, is our future strength. Remember that always. If you are integrating all this change, right? Always, always, always remember that. So let's do one Brahmari to finalize, to clear, to thank our Shavasana. Deep breath in. Mm. side to side, twinkling fingers like stars, the soles of the feet to the floor, roll out your knees, oh. a few pelvic tilts, up and down, nice and easy, again, just to massage, just to bring feeling, movement, right, the movement is medicine, you know what that is now, Whew. good, rolling over onto left or right side, and slowly, gently, gently, 
coming up to a comfortable seated position. Hiya. So again, once seated, you'll really feel the effect of our practice, right? So you can either place the soles under the knees. Maybe that's a lot looser than before. And maybe today you could even try bringing the heels towards the tailbone. And opening it up here and just feeling, see, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back, heart forward, heart back. And now I don't feel anything down here because it's all nicely stretched. Right? And that's the idea as I sit in the meditation, right? There's the body is tingling. It wants to sit, right? And that's why yoga, the physical practice, the pranayama, the pratyahara, turning inward, the dharana, the concentration of the practice, the dhyana, the meditation, that's why it grows out of that. Now we're in the dhyana. We're ready for the meditation. So close your eyes, bring your hands together. All right, and you just start to feel. We talked about it earlier today, about you know the brain, the somatosensory part of our brains and the motor sensory part of our brains are dedicated, right? There's so much, so many neurons, I should say, dedicated to touch, to physical touch from the hands in particular. Mouth is really important, obviously, because we chew, right? Our noses, you know, there's lots of sensitive areas, our ears, right? But our hands predominantly get a lot of the attention. And so if you could imagine your brain on an MRI, just by doing this, your brain is like, it's very powerful. Hopefully one day U of T will Give me access, right, for study. That's the whole point, right? The journey through is to, if it's not me, it'll be someone else, but to learn from that, to keep sharing all of what we already know, right? And that's the best part, is to bring light to the darkness. The darkness is already there. It's the light that comes, and that's the gift. So let's feel our own gift. Whoo, lots of energy today. Right, feel that energy, feel that flow. Feel it nose to toes. Crown of the head to the tailbone. Right, and as you breathe, move up your spine. And as you exhale, move down your spine. This is called shishuma, right? The, Natties move through the body. That's what we've just been moving around, sifting left and right. But now we got the center of the line open, the channels open, so you can right fill up and release. And let's do one powerful ohm all together as we slowly bring the palms together to really solidify our practice. Deep breath in. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. In your hearts, in your lives, and everything that you see, are, and be. The divine in me sees and shares the divine in you. In love, with love, through love. Thank you everyone for coming out today. Namaste. Yay! Thank you guys. It was such a beautiful class today.